Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're working on the Redneck Supra, our 4200 swapped straight six GM Atlas motor. Today, we're gonna solve one of the biggest problems with this swap, and that's the oil pan. From the factory, these come with a front sump, and that just doesn't work for our application. So I'm gonna show you how we turned a five cylinder pan into this. All right, so we finally got the engine out of the engine bay. We've got the transmission off of it down here on the floor. Got it back on the engine stand and flipped upside down. I went ahead and started cleaning off uh, the bottom of the block. So we got a nice clean surface because as I mentioned in the prior videos, uh, the 4200 only came with the front sump oil pan, which is not gonna work in our application. The 4200 actually never came in a rear sump in anything. So we gotta come up with a fix for that solution right here behind me. This is a five cylinder rear wheel drive pan or rear sump pan, sorry, out of a uh, Colorado. Picked this dude up on eBay for like 50 bucks. So we're gonna have to modify the pan as well as the pickup tube. So I also picked up the Colorado pickup tube. Um, but of course, this is for a five cylinder. So we're gonna have to modify it. All right, so based on some photos that I saved on my phone, it looks like the cut is kind of right, kind of right on this corner. And let me look at a few of these other pictures. Yeah, I mean, really kind of straight across. This one that I have saved on my phone looks perfect. I mean, if mine turns out like that, I'll be absolutely stoked. Um, but really, I mean, it's kind of just a straight shot across here is what it looks like. There's two little bends in the back of the pan here. And that's kind of what we're going for. So on the back side here, these two bolts and all the two in the back and this corner all line up. This one does not. So I'm curious if perhaps people just don't use that corner one, I'm not sure. I mean, this pan has a ton of bolts on it, so I guess if one's missing, it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, but I, I would like to make it look like it should be there. Um, yeah, interesting enough, it just doesn't fit. I don't know, maybe maybe, uh, maybe they redrill that hole, which looks like that could be an option as well. There is some meat on the pan there for it. So uh, we're just gonna go for it. So I'm gonna finish mocking this up and get the uh, cutting tool out and chop it in half. All right, got my brand new full face shield on and actually picked up a new grinder. So we're gonna try this dude out and see how it goes. I actually think this might be easier turned a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> now we got two pieces so uh i'll clean up this edge real quick with the flap disc and then let's just set these pieces back on top and kind of see what we're working with and hopefully uh didn't screw anything up <laughs> all right so we have the oil pan bolted down and one of the key things to keep in mind when doing this is just like the LS, the couple of the holes of the oil pan actually bolt to the transmission or the transmission uses those um, to bolt to the engine and the, and the oil pan. So key thing is when I'm doing this, I wanted to make sure that the rear of the pan and the rear of the block are sitting perfectly flush when I bolted it down. So let me flip this around and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So the back side of the pan here has a few holes where the transmission can bolt to. So I made sure that this is flush with the back of the block. So I've got our two small bolts down in there, two over here, 
and this one back here. Now this one actually doesn't line up. I think the hole was further back. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna ask on the group if guys are drilling and tapping this out to put a bolt hole there, or if they're just forgetting about this one because there is another one right here. Now, I wish I had made the cut just a little bit further forward and we would have missed this, this hole right here. But I think either way, um, we're gonna have to, when I make this plate, uh, drill this out a little bit and extend it to be able to use that one. This one is super close. Um, I marked it with a with a Sharpie. If I just open this hole just a tiny bit, that one will be just fine. These are in. This one is off a bit. I can't remember if it's over here or here. So I don't know if I'm gonna open this or just roll with it. I mean, it's not that far away. I can't imagine that missing a one of the, one or two of these bolts is gonna make that big of a difference but I'll confirm these are in three in the front. And then let me walk back around this way. If we open this one up just a tiny bit, I think we'll, we'll hit it there. You can kind of see the hole there. This one of course will get added when we put the plate in. I mean, so you can see how far some of these are from each other, all of these lined up. And then of course around here and our three small ones in the front again. So <clears throat> I think as far as that goes, it's not too bad. Um, there's a lot holding the pan on. I've got it tightened down. So the next step is going to be to start connecting the dots and essentially it's going to be like five pieces. So I've got the top or what will be the bottom of the pan across there, the two side pieces, and then pretty much the two pieces on the bottom to, uh, finish out the flange. So let me show you, I've got some of this, uh, leftover aluminum stock that I used years ago, I think for the trunk of the 240. Ironically enough, this piece almost fits in there. Um, but I think what I want to do is cut out, measure and cut out this top piece. We'll get that kind of sitting on there, then build our two sides. The flange is about twice the thickness, so I may run out and grab just a stick of a little bit thicker aluminum. I think I've seen some guys double this up, but I'd rather just get a nice piece. So maybe we'll build the flanges first. Um, on the bottom, then build the walls and then the top cover. I'm not sure how I want to do it yet, but I've got, should be plenty of this. Um, I mean, honestly, that's actually, wow. That's almost actually, no, that, that is the width of this pan. Well, yeah, that looks pretty good. That's not bad at all. Um, I think Jake would be pretty happy with <laughs> that seam that's right there. That's, I mean, at most right there. I mean, that's gotta be, I don't know. I, that's, I don't even think that's an 18th of an inch. So yeah, I like it. It's coming together. Looking good. I've got two pieces so far done the top. And I guess this is what the driver's side pretty close fitment there. One thing I'm not certain of is you can see the oil pan kind of has these cutout sections to easily get to the bolts. And if I just do a flat sheet here, that's not really going to be the case. So I need to go back and look to see what people do with this. Um, right now I've got this cut full length from the top to the bottom. I may shorten it when we put a piece in here. So that may get shortened up a little bit. Um, it could be welded either way, but I don't know. I have to see how that goes. So yeah, it's sitting there uh, tiny little gap. There should be nothing for him to fill. I kind of leaving just a little bit of extra. This is nice and flat. So just got one more piece over here to do. I might pick this back up in the morning though. All right. We got all three sections of the pan cut out. Um, you know, there'll be a little bit of minor tweaking when we go to weld it up, um, just to make sure everything fits nice, but let me show you where we're at with this. And then I need to make a decision on how I want to do the bottom pieces. So let's take a look. There's the final piece. I just went ahead and put some arrows on it to mark it for now. Uh, we've got it sitting down. It's actually right now sitting down on the bottom. So again, if we cut out a full piece, this may get raised up. I'm not sure yet. So there's that. There's our top piece. And then the piece that we had already done on this side. That's all three pieces. It looks pretty good. I like it. Again, the sump is going to be massive. Um, that's going to fit a ton of oil in it. 
And because of that and looking at, I think, kind of where the mount lines up in this, we may end up, as much as I hate to do more work on it, we may end up chopping this down and coming flush on here. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see just based on what I'm looking like uh, or what it's looking like sitting in the engine bay. That may give us some more room. I'm not 100% sure. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and weld up the extension first and then drop it back in the engine bay, see where it sits. Uh, plus I still have to put the subframe spacers on so that'll probably be in the next video. So be sure to check that out. I'm gonna drop the cave member down to give us more room, but it's kind of just a step-by-step -step process. So again, pan's looking good, I'm liking it. What I need to decide on is I saw a few people, what they did was actually, um, they took, they went ahead and just cut it off of here. That way you've got the exact same piece. Um, I was really trying to avoid using any old metal that's got oil stains, etc., cetera, um, just to make things easier to weld. I'm just not sure how I'm, I'm gonna have to find some skinny bolts, I guess, uh, to work down in there, you know? That's what this whole project is, is figuring it out. So currently what I'm doing, one last thing we need to do before we take this to Jake's is get the pickup tube set up. Uh, the front sump was just right here for the pickup tube. And so it had a mount here where this is threaded. That doesn't work with this one. We've actually got two mounts to deal with. So I went ahead and tapped this part of the girdle here, you know, keeping the engine at an angle, get all the shavings out. So I'm going to mount this one here, tighten up the bolt on the, um, oil pump and then what I think we'll do is probably end up making a cut right here um, kind of where this bend is and take this piece and mount it back there so I'll have to take this off do the same thing tap for a hole there and then the only other thing that we have to do besides extending this is also checking the height which might just be a matter of cutting this and shortening it because I think we've got plenty of space here I don't really think the pipe needs to be adjusted as far as like this height I think this is just sitting too high but I'll get it mounted back there and put this piece back on and figure out where that is. So I'm going to tight, finish this up, bolt, bolt, cut, then do the back. All right, so I think I've got this pretty well situated. Went ahead and drilled and tapped this rear one, rear one here. And then I was actually able to just bend this a little bit. We've got a nice little coverage there. Got a little bit of an angle, but so does the pan. So it kind of matches that angle. Um, and then we've got this section here that we need to connect. Got everything down here on the bottom, looking good. So I think that shouldn't be too bad. You know, we may have to put a little bit of an angle in here just to get these to match up nice, but hey, that works. So I'm um, just double checking all my bolts here, but I think we're gonna load this in the back of the truck and take it over to Jake's. And I'll get, you know, I'm gonna clean this all out I try to do my best to get nothing in there, but I'm sure between all the grinding and cutting and et cetera, there's probably some stuff in there. We'll get it all cleaned out real good. All right, we made it over here to Fish Fab. I got the one and only Jake over here getting stuff prepped. What's up? Ready to do a little welding job on our pan. We've got it over here bolted up. Uh, I think Jake's happy with the pieces I made. He likes the fitment. So we're gonna throw a few tacks on there, get everything kind of sorted, double check where we want it. And then uh, I guess uh, Jake can just go to town welding on this thing. They are notorious for warping, so that's why we've got it over here bolted down. Jake's going to take his time and kind of bounce around on the welds. Um, that way we don't get too much warping, but, you know, it's RTV, so it'll, it'll fill the gaps. And then um, we talked about it. We may fill this one and go ahead and um, drill it out later and put an Allen head in there, make that nice. But otherwise, I, I think we're looking good, so... Do your thing, man, do your thing.
been a couple days. We are back over here at Jake's Fish Fab. There's the man himself, and he has got the pan all welded up as far as the pieces that we put together. Check that out. Look at that, that's a massive sump. We'll be able to put 12 quarts of oil in this bad boy. Um, so now we've just got to, let's see, what do we need to do? We're gonna Place go ahead and- a, uh, turbo return for the future. Yeah, for the future turbo return, which I think we're gonna probably just toss in right, right about there, yeah. Cool. I think that'll work, that'll give us plenty of room. So we're gonna pop this pan off and do that. And then I think we're gonna just double check everything on the inside and then the last piece is, if you guys recall, we've got to uh, extend the sump. So he got the tube and we're all set to go on that. So we'll get this off and get started. A little bit? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. My, the only thing I'm worried about with, the, with this is just the height. Okay. We just wanna make sure so it's not scooted back just sitting on the here, bottom. Okay. Yeah, it should be fine. I'm not super worried about it. All right, last piece here. Last piece we got is extending this. I guess I should switch over to steel. Oh, yeah. And not be on 316. All right, last bit here is just extending our sump, and then that about does it for this project. So Jake's got a nice little piece cut out, and he's going to throw some welds. There it is. It's right there. So he's going to throw some welds on this while we watch him. <laughs> right? We watch, but we don't judge. Yeah, yeah, we don't judge, we don't judge. All right, perfect. We got the pickup tube all welded, looks good. And we went ahead and did a little squish test just to make sure um, we got about a, I don't know, three eighths, quarter inch or so of gap up here in the front. Again, with this massive sump, we'll be able to run lots of extra oil. So I think we're good. We did it. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna get the pan back on there one last time. And then um, I got something really cool I wanna show you guys real quick before we end this video. So hold tight. All right guys, so we got our extended custom oil pan done up by the man behind the camera right now, Jake, over here at Fish Fab. Huge thanks to him. Uh, this is gonna work out perfect. We've got our oil drain pre-done, so when we do go turbo, we'll be ready to rock on that on the backside here. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do once we get home is clean up one of these holes, couple of these holes, so we can get our, uh, probably our Allen head bolts in there, or button head something just to fit. Because again, when we're doing something custom like this, it's not perfect, but we'll make it perfect. So hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing that. But before you go, I wanna show you one last cool thing. We've got some interest in this motor and this build. And along with that, we've got some custom billet plates here. Even got the Team Hybrid racing on there. So a uh, friend of a friend of mine that I met through uh, Six Summer owns a company in Illinois that's helping us kind of come up with some custom parts on this that hopefully maybe can become part of a kit one day. Um, you know, we're all just diving in, doing something new and having to figure it out, but we're gonna bolt these plates on and we've got all these different threaded holes in this plate where we can come up with some kind of cool motor mount that we're gonna work on. So in the next video, check out these on the motor and we're gonna install our uh, lowering spacers for our K member and drop this in one more time to see if we can get it to fit with the new pan and the spacers. So be sure to check, check that out. Guys, if you haven't liked the channel, you gotta like the channel, you gotta subscribe, you gotta comment below or don't, but you should. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you all in the next one.